Oh, yeah, this is Suzanne Connor Sink with Dawning Visions Hypnosis in Healing Teens and Children. The subject that I am really interested in these days is that of males with anorexia and bulimia. And the reason that I am interested in this particular subject at this time is because I've had a few people come to me looking for help. And the sad reality is that they aren't even discussed in the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, DSM, that the licensed mental health professionals use to diagnose people with eating disorders, anorexia, and bulimia. It's like they don't exist. But according to the National Eating Disorder Association, 10 million males will suffer with eating disorders this year. 33% of adolescent males use unhealthy weight control behaviors. 43% of men are dissatisfied with their bodies. Gay males, which are considered 5% of the general population, 42% of males identify as gay. And these folks have higher statistics of having eating disorders, such as anorexia and bulimia, than the general population of males. Families are very surprised that their sons could have eating disorders, believing that only females have this problem, and that's because that is what they're told over and over and over again in those women magazines that they purchase. The medical people speak about teenagers, now even eight-year-old girls, being concerned about being overweight. Eight-year-olds, people, we're doing something inherently wrong in our societies when an eight-year-old is worried about their weight instead of going out and having fun and playing with their friends. I mean, come on, people. This is pretty bizarre. But it gets a little bit more complicated than this because when people have eating disorders, they tend to have severe anxiety attacks. I was doing a consultation with a young woman turning 16 years old the next week after we did this particular consultation. And she had really severe anxiety disorders to the point where you could see that she was going into the true feelings of trauma, feeling she was gonna die. It was like right there in front of my eyes, even though we we're doing this through the internet. I do all my work through the internet these days. They're worried about their body image, as we are saying, many times, They'll eat only soup for dinner. Or they'll choose foods that they won't normally eat. Junk foods instead of veggie burgers. Meaning they'll go for the veggie burgers instead of the junk food. How many teenagers do you know? We'll say emotionally healthy teenagers. Are going to go for veggie burgers versus chips and dip. Cheese and crackers. Pizza! and beer. And you get my drift there. There's layers and layers of insecurity that are happening as a result of this problem. And this is a really huge issue. So what I want you to understand is that in the layers of insecurity, there's family issues that can be involved. Parents might be arguing a whole lot, or maybe they got divorced. This created problems. Maybe there's someone in the family who also had eating disorders. I know with a lot of my female eating disorder clients, their mothers had eating disorders. I had one woman, she came to me when she's 42 years old, I think, the oldest eating disorder person I had. And by the way, I prefer younger folks before 26 years old because a prefrontal cortex is not fully developed. And in the world of hypnotism, it means they're in their natural hypnotic state up until that point, so I can work very easily with them. However, in this particular case, her mother was an anorexic, and she was telling me the story of being seven years old. 
and having to hide the fact that she wanted to eat one of her mother's yogurts, which her mother never ate, being anorexic, right? And she'd go into one of those pop-up campers and hide to eat the yogurt as a seven-year-old. Her mother had a lot of issues. And her father had her in mental institutions for a lot of years. She did have some pretty serious issues other than just the eating disorders. But that be it as it may, we start to understand how these things might start. I had another eating disorder client of mine. She was 29 years old. She had a perfect bikini body, 5'9", long legs. And she wasn't doing the eating disorder so much. She was eating pretty healthfully, but she still had some of the behaviors of an eating disorder person. When she had called me, she had actually seen a flyer of mine up at Harvard University where she was going to school at the time. She had transferred out to a different school by the time we started working with each other. And what she had recognized the fact was that she would have this ritual around food. Would she go to the 7-Eleven convenience store, walk around the store a few times, get a loaf of bread, bring it home to her house, lay out some newspapers, and then she'd chew the bread and then be a little ball and she'd spit it out. So she'd get the taste of it, but she wouldn't have the calories of it. And she wanted to stop that habit. And she realized that that was part of her eating disorder. But interestingly enough, she did not come out and tell me she had an eating disorder. I had asked her a lot of questions after she told me what she was doing. And yes, she had a history of anorexia, starting when she was, I don't remember, 15, 16 years old, something like that. But honestly, it started when she was two years old. They only started to show the symptomologies at 15. Because when she was two years old, she was in one of those little chairs that you see sometimes in the restaurants that hook onto the table in her mother's and father's house. And they were both pushing oatmeal into her face. Now, she never had a dislike of oatmeal. She just generalized it to hating eating in particular. And she wanted to know why that was. So we did something called timeline therapy to release negative emotions in order to find that out. And that was actually her idea. That was not my idea. She'd asked me if I would do it to help her figure that out. And that's what we found out, very interestingly enough. So there are a lot of different issues that can arise that can cause these problems. If you have one out of 100 people tell you you're fat, the one that sticks with you is the one who told you you're fat, another 99 who told you you look great, they get ignored when you have these problems. We have another problem with parents who are embarrassed by eating disorders because they no longer have their perfect kid. It doesn't happen just with eating disorders, but if you think about this as a triple whammy, if you have a gay son who has eating disorders, which is, as we just said, even seen by the mental health professionals is something that is only happening with females. It's embarrassing. How do you explain this to people? Not that I believe parents need to explain their kids' personal problems to anybody, mind you. But it's natural that they will confide in their friends. And to think otherwise is to be, I think, in a fantasy world, frankly. Everybody needs to have their confidence. So what happens a lot of times when this all begins is that a person starts doing a little something to gain control of the situation. And that control is wrapped around what they eat, when they eat, how they eat, what they eat. And for both of the sexes, over-exercising is a really big deal, but for the females it's about losing a lot of weight so their periods go away so they don't have to feel like they're growing up. This is true. I've talked to many, many of my clients. This is what they tell me. It's coming from them themselves, okay? And with the men and the males, it's about wanting six-pack abs, building muscle, to be what they presume to be a fine specimen of the male human physique. But then what happens is it gets out of control to the point where they can't stop doing the working out and they start restricting their diets more and more and more in terms of what they're willing to eat and how much. And in the end, they end up getting very, very ill if it's not caught 
early enough to turn around pretty easily. So the questions they always have is, will that make me fat? Will that other thing make me fat? They have this obsessive compulsive thing that goes on with any addicts, and they are indeed addicts because they have the obsessive thoughts. It's all they're thinking about is their physique and how to get it to the point where they feel it's perfect. And then it takes over their thinking every waking moment. Now, this is the deal. We don't want parents blaming themselves for this issue. Each person's going to develop it for a different reason, and if healing needs to be done, we do the healing. That's all there is to it. We need them eating whole foods, not processed junk food, not a lot of the stuff that we see in the United States, which is, I would say, bastardized food with all the herbicides and insecticides. Most of it's GMO'd now. And even the organic stuff, you don't know if it's organic because quite honestly, 60 Minutes did a section on that. And they went to a farm stand after following this guy to where conventional fruits and vegetables are sold to grocers, saw him there buying this stuff, and was pretending his conventional food was organic so he could make a real lot of money on it at the farm stand, all right? Really, really bad. Actually, it was a farmer's market. And, you know, he tried to lie about it. But, you know, when you're caught on camera, it's kind of hard to lie. So we don't really know what the food is in America. That's why I'm not living there. Because I prefer to know that my food is organic and that the farmers here are doing it the right way. And it's delicious. And more nutritious as a result. <laughs> but that's just a side step. So they have an embarrassment and stigma about their bad body image. Feeling bad about themselves. And it's really kept private with boys and men. They push aside the body image issues. The professional people do, as well as society in general, where they take it much more serious than girls. And that's why I'm making this video. I'm going to make a bunch of them because I really want people to understand that there is help for you out there. And I can give you this help as a hypnotist. It's probably a lot less expensive than if you're going to try to <clears throat> get a placement in one of those eating disorder clinics where they want forty to $50,000 a month because they put you under 24-hour surveillance, including following you into the bathroom. I was talking to a gentleman, a 20-year-old, who said he wouldn't go to one of these programs because they're going to follow him into the bathroom. They do that to make sure that they're not going to purge the food or cut themselves because a lot of people with these problems will do that. They do cutting behaviors. It helps them get more into their body and it relaxes them. I learned that from professionals who work in the business who had that problem and did an in-service program many, many moons ago when I was working with mentally ill people in psychiatric programs for adults. And the way that we go about doing this is multifaceted, just so you know. I need to be able to help you learn how to love yourself again. You didn't come out of your mom's vagina hating yourself. It's something you learn from the program you took in and interpreted in that way. Then we need to deal with the addiction issue of the actual eating disorder. We have to deal with some nutritional stuff so your body can function normally because even like plants, people, you need to have the appropriate nutrition or your body's not going to have the basic nutrients it needs in order to do the functions. And that older anorexic I was talking about, she was having neurological problems because she wasn't eating that well. And the medications were interfering too. She's on a lot of psychotropic meds, which she finally got herself off of. Because the psychiatrist wouldn't help her do it. They're supposed to. But she figured out how to do it little by little. But I would not suggest anyone ever do that. You need to have a psychiatrist help you. See. Go and find one that will help you do that. And then we have to help you with boundaries. And my 29-year-old client, she had all kinds of things going on with her boyfriend who was over in Paris, France, telling her that he was ready to jump off the terrace of the hotel he was at, to which I told her to tell him that she has enough of her own issues and that if he needs psychiatric help to go find some upon his return to the United States, that she was not a psychiatrist and could not do that for him. So 
boundaries. And she's paying for a cell phone. He's in France. Why the hell is she paying for a cell phone? So what happened was she ended up going over to France, helping him move to the new school that they were both attending at the time. And then she ended up breaking off with him, which was the appropriate thing to do. And she's doing very well after that. Because when you get healthy, you attract healthier people, people. There you go. So I hope you got a lot of value out of this. This song behind me is building uh, another apartment. I'm hoping that's not too loud on there. I'll have to check it out. But in any case, I thank you for spending your time with me. Till the next video. Bye bye all.